Okay, so for this first shot, I filmed two different clips. One of me sitting at a table on my laptop, and this was locked off on a tripod. And the second was a handheld shot of my desk. This didn't have to be anything specific, just a shot that had a handheld motion to it. Then with both of those clips in Premiere, I took the handheld shot of my desk and stacked it on top of the footage of me sitting at the table. Then selected both of those clips, right clicked, nested them together, and then added warp stabilizer to the nested sequence. And changed the result to no motion, and the method to position, scale, and rotation. After that was done analyzing, I opened up the nested sequence and deleted the clip of my desk. Now when I play back the nested sequence, you can see that I kept the motion from the deleted clip and applied it to the footage underneath. And I ended up using this handheld look for a few of the other effects in the video. So to create the muzzle flash effect, I have this footage of one of my actors running and firing an airsoft gun for one of my short films. I added that footage to Premiere along with a few images of muzzle flashes that I found on Google Images. I downloaded a front view angle for when my actor's facing the camera and a side view angle for when the camera's facing the side of him. If you're doing multiple muzzle flashes in your scene, it's good to use different images so it doesn't look too repetitive. But so with my footage in Premiere, I took the front view angle of the muzzle flash and layered that on top of the footage of my actor. Then I trimmed the muzzle flash image down to just one frame and changed the blend mode to screen this got rid of the black background for the muzzle flash then i rescaled and positioned the muzzle flash over the airsoft gun when my actor fired it added a gaussian blur to it with the amount set to 30 this got rid of some of the sharpness and helped it blend into my scene better then i duplicated the muzzle flash image and stacked it on top of itself and for the top layer i changed the blend mode to linear dodge and then scaled it up a little bit so it was slightly bigger than the muzzle flash layer underneath, and then dropped the opacity to 30%. This created a glow around my muzzle flash. So the muzzle flash is done, and now I just have to add some smoke. I use some stock footage of a smoke puff, and you can find these on stock footage websites like Action VFX, or you can sometimes find some on YouTube. People upload free muzzle flash and gun effects packs sometimes. So I added the smoke puff to my scene. Mine had a spark in the beginning. I just trimmed that off so it was the smoke by itself. Then I layered that under my muzzle flash images and changed the blend mode to screen. Scaled it down and repositioned it to where I wanted it in my scene. I wanted to start around the same size as the muzzle flash. Then I keyframed the scale, went forward a few frames, and scaled it up. This made it look like the smoke was expanding from the barrel of the gun and moving towards the camera. Then I dropped the opacity to 50%, keyframed that, and then had it fade out at the same time as it's expanding to make it look like it's fading away into the air. And then I sped it up a little by changing the speed to 170. And then for the shot of my actor from the side, I used the side angle view of the muzzle flash and a side view angle of the smoke puff as well. And then just repeated all the same steps. So for the color change effect, I shot one clip and it was of my wife wearing an orange beanie. This effect works best if the color that you're trying to change is a solid vibrant color. With my footage in Premiere, I added Lumetri color and I used the HSL secondary tab to do the color change effect. In that tab, I used the set color eyedropper and selected a part on the beanie that was inside the midtones. Then I used the add color eyedropper to click in the darker part of the beanie that was inside the shadows. After that, I checked the show mask box and changed it to white and black. This showed me my mask and everything that's white in the scene I'll be able to change the color of and everything that's black will stay the same. Then I tweaked the HSL sliders to get the hat a more solid white. And then there were still some black areas left on the beanie so I used the add color eyedropper again and kept clicking in those black areas until the beanie turned completely white. And then I used the remove color eyedropper and clicked on any white spots that I had around my scene that weren't the hat. Then I unchecked the show mask box and went down to the color wheel and anywhere that I click on it it'll change the hat to that color. I also used the slider to the left of the wheel and the temperature, tint, and saturation sliders underneath the wheel to tweak the colors to exactly how I wanted them. And then after all that I had my final effect. So for this effect I filmed one shot and it was of my wife walking and looking up at the sky. I made sure to film this on a nice and sunny day when there was no clouds in the sky so that the sky was completely blue. If there are clouds in the sky this effect won't work because I'm going to be using the sky as basically a giant blue screen. I also made sure to film this shot locked off on a tripod. So with my clip in Premiere I added the color key effect and used the key color eyedropper to select a part of the sky that was towards the top of the frame. Then I opened up the color tolerance slider and started adjusting that. And once I start adjusting that my sky will start disappearing. For my shot the color tolerance started affecting some of the buildings in my shot. As you can see right here, this window started turning black, and that's not good because these areas in the building will be see-through. So I scaled back the color tolerance a little bit until it wasn't affecting my buildings at all, and then I copied the color key effect and pasted that back into the effect controls panel. Then I reset the color key effect that I just pasted, and then took the key color eyedropper on that color key effect and selected a part in the sky right underneath the black. 
And then I did the same thing and adjusted that color tolerance right up until it started affecting the buildings. And then copied and pasted that color key effect, reset the new one, and then did the same thing. I ended up doing this four times in total until I perfectly keyed out my sky without affecting the buildings underneath. Then with my sky keyed out, I went onto Google Images and searched for some snowy mountain pictures. And I made sure to change the usage rights to labeled for reuse. And then I found an image that I liked and brought that into Premiere. Then I took that image and placed it underneath my video footage and extended it to the length of my clip. Scaled it and repositioned it to how I wanted it in my scene. Then flipped it horizontally so the shadows matched my footage. And then color graded both of those to match with a blue look to give it a winter feel. I also added the fake handheld effect to the shot and that gave me my final result. So for the super speed effect, I shot one clip locked off on a tripod and broke it up into four separate parts. The first part was of me throwing the football. The second part was of me catching the football that was thrown by my wife. The third part was a clean plate. And the fourth part was me creating the gust of wind and blowing these papers off of the table. Then I brought my footage into Premiere and broke it up into those four separate parts. And then pieced together the part of me throwing the football and catching it, timing it up to make it look like I'm throwing it to myself. Next, I went to the end of the clip of me throwing the football and made a cut on the last frame. Then I selected that frame and made a rough mask around my body, increased the feather to 250, then brought my clean plate underneath, starting it at that frame that I cut. Then on the frame that I added the mask, I also added a directional blur. I changed the direction to 90 degrees and increased the blur length to 100. And then I offset the position of that a little to the left. This all created the look like I was beginning my run into super speed. And then I went to the clip of me catching the football and made a cut on the first frame of that clip and then did the same thing. Added a mask, increased the feather to 250, added the directional blur, and then offset the position of that frame to the right. And this creates the look of me coming out of super speed. I also made sure that my clean plate extended to the end of the clip of me catching the football. So at this point, it's already looking pretty good, but you can still see my wife throwing me the football. So to get rid of her out of the scene, I'm gonna create a mask on the footage of me catching the football around the left side of the frame where I am, and this will get rid of her on the other side. The next thing that I did was take the clip of the papers blowing up in the air and place that on top of everything and in between the two frames that I cut, the ones that have the blurs on them. This makes it look like when I'm running by, I created a gust of wind and it blew the papers off the table. I also made sure to start that clip right when the papers start blowing up off of the table. Then I made sure I was at the beginning of that clip and I had it selected and I created a mask around the right side of the frame and this got rid of the left side of the frame where you could see me creating the wind. And then after all that, I added in the handheld effect and then I was finished. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Consider subscribing over here if you haven't already. Give this video a like if you found it interesting and check out some of my other work, which will be over here. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.